Hello. In this video, we'll look at one of the most important feasts of the liturgical year, albeit one that is unfamiliar to many who are new to Anglicanism. Celebrated on November 1st, All Saints Day focuses our attention on the doctrine of the communion of saints, which we confess every week in the Creed. The Collect for All Saints Day helps introduce this theme in more detail. O oh, Almighty God, who hast knit together thine elect in one communion and fellowship, in the mystical body of thy Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow thy blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those unspeakable joys which thou hast prepared for those who unfeignedly love thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The reference to the faithful departed suggests that All Saints Day is a particularly good time for reflecting on that part of the communion of saints presently with the Lord in heaven. Now to give some historical context, the origins of All Saints Day go back at least as far as the fourth century, when there was a special feast day set aside for all Christian martyrs. In the eighth century, the Western Church began celebrating All Saints Day on November 1st, just as we do today. The festival was retained in many of the Reformation churches, including Anglicanism. Things get more complicated, though, when we ask, who exactly are these saints that we're celebrating? Medieval Catholicism distinguished between some Christians who were in heaven and other Christians who were in a place called purgatory. Purgatory was a doctrine created by the medieval Roman Catholic Church. The idea behind it is that the vast majority of Christians who die are still in need of a time of cleansing and punishment before they are fit to see God face to face. Some Christians who lived particularly exemplary lives were able to skip purgatory and go straight to heaven. These are the saints of which the medieval Catholic Church spoke and are to be contrasted with the souls of those who are still in purgatory. Thus, for the medieval church, All Saints Day was about that more narrow group of saints who were already in heaven. The medieval church therefore went on to create an additional feast to remember all those Christians who were not in heaven, but in purgatory. This became known as All Souls Day, celebrated on November 2nd, the day after All Saints Day. The problem with this view, however, is that the New Testament does not appear to make a distinction between Christians in the intermediate state, who all appear to be awaiting the bodily resurrection in the presence of the Lord. Indeed, Article 22 of the 39 Articles of Religion explicitly rejects the Roman decree of purgatory. Rather, the New Testament suggests that all Christians are already saints by virtue of their baptism and faith, and makes clear that all Christians will be with Christ upon their death. For instance, Jesus tells the thief on the cross that today you will be with me in paradise. Here we arrive at the mystery of the communion of saints, which we confess every week in the Creed. We are one in Christ with them. This is why, in the Liturgy for Holy Communion, we rejoice that we are celebrating with all the company of heaven. It is also why we can continue to pray for those who are departed, and now with the Lord, as we do in the prayer for the whole state of Christ's Church, that God would grant them continual growth in thy love and service as they await their bodily resurrection. As N.T. Wright says, love passes into prayer. We still love them. Why not hold them in that love before God? Now, as a brief aside, it might be worth considering how Halloween fits into all of this. In England, All Saints Day was known as All Hallows Day. Hence, the evening before All Saints Day, the night of October 31st, was All Hallows Eve, from which we get Halloween. Halloween, however, began to take on its own meaning in light of the Kel Celtic feast of Samhain, the beginning of winter which was celebrated on November 1st. The eve of Samhain, October 31st, was a time when the Celts would make sacrifices, believing that on this night, the souls of the dead would return to their earthly homes. Fearful of marauding ghosts, witches, and goblins, some Celts wore costumes of animal heads and skins. Thus, while All Saints Day arose independent of any pagan traditions, we can see how, in the Celtic context of the British Isles, many of the pagan ideas of Samhain would continue even after the establishment of Christianity and fuse themselves to the celebration of the eve of All Saints Day in many of the popular traditions we now associate with Halloween. 
Please note, I'm not trying to come down one way or another on whether or not Christians should participate in our American cultural rituals of Halloween, like trick-or-treating, which can often be an important opportunity for a ministry of presence in one's neighborhood. Though, this can perhaps help us see that not every aspect of our celebration of Halloween is entirely harmless. Finally, back to All Saints Day itself. Apart from the church's celebration of this feast, you may wish to mark it in your own home or make it part of your family's yearly rhythms. In our family, we use it as a time to teach our children about their calling to be saints. We also use it as a time to set out pictures of loved ones we have lost, who are now with the Lord, and we tell our children stories about them. May the Lord bless you this All Saints Day.